And that is something how we're going to be introducing permissions. So starting a little bit from something a little bit more difficult, but the reason for that is pretty straightforward. We do it uh, so that we can understand fully how permissions work without any, any possible exception. So you might be wondering as well why I've got here this orange marking on the picture. So we get a GW, GX, GR, GA. So generic write, generic execute, generic read, and generic all. An answer to that is pretty simple because if you look for the picture on the Microsoft web page, you're going to see something like that. GR, GW, GE, GA. But hold on, it's a little bit of a different order, isn't it? So just returning here, GW, GX, GR, GA. Yep, because unfortunately, what we got in the website, it's not correct. So this is already the first challenge about permissions. You want to learn like 100%, you want to do the super deep dive, but then the material that you see over there, it's not always accurate. And uh, when you're going to be digging into permissions, reading lots of articles in the internet, in fact, you're going to get into conclusion after learning what we're going to learn today, that quite a lot of them are not correct. Maybe it's not really nice to say that, but unfortunately, permissions are not as simple as they look like. First of all, whenever we are thinking about permissions, instead of just, you know, using the read, write, execute, so these names, it's better a little bit to use something that we call SDDL, security a descriptor definition language. And the descriptor itself, security descriptor, it's a string that permission-wise describes us permissions. So basically, that's basically a, a, a description over there. And within this description, we can see that um, in here, it's a quite a large string. So let's have a look here, SDDL, where we can see that uh, this is on the Windows folder. There is a pretty long list that describes us where, who has access to and what kind of. Of course, we're going to be demystifying it um, a little bit in a moment. And it looks complex, but in fact, it's actually really simple. It's just a matter of understanding the logic. Yeah? But a little bit about the SDDL before we move forward uh, so that it's super clear. This is already, as we said, a language that describes us different objects that we can use in Windows operating system. And in fact, you can see that we've got here files, folders, shares in orange, registry, printer services, Active Directory objects, DNS zones, even log files, and so on. So any type of object where any type of object where we are able to change impact permissions. So the access level to this particular object. And that list is already quite long. While normally we rather operate maybe on Active Directory objects, also files and folders, that's default shares, not that often, but then registry, eh, yeah, services, not that much too. So in general, there is lots of places where you can assign permissions. Now, whenever we are looking at permissions, I think what will be definitely important to do and to check is how does in general permission um work when we are looking into the particular folder. And for that uh, purpose, I'm going to start the PowerShell with the administrative privileges. So let me do it. And uh, we're going to be playing, we're going to be playing with the SDDL. And uh, we're going to be explaining, of course, uh, how SDDL describes different types of objects, sometimes a little bit more difficult ones, but sometimes a little more simple. So over there, we've got a PowerShell. Let me just put it on a full screen. And in fact, if we're going to do uh, in here, get ACL, per C, Windows, Windows. And then we're going to do format list because otherwise it will be just cut a little bit. We will not be able to see it. Then that's basically the output that we got that was on the slide. But this time live. And you can see that sometimes it's interesting because we've got over there the SID looking from the bottom, in fact. And then we've got also GXGR, but we've got this A. So they, then A, of course, is going to be for allow, D is going to be for deny. So that's a little first information here. But it's all like an access control entry. What is important logically in access control entry? One, who is the recipient of that restriction slash permissions, allowance, denial, and so on. Second, what kind of permissions we got? Third, 
whether it's inherited, for example, or not, or inheritance is broken or not. And then we've got A, allow or D, deny. Yeah, that's basically the logic for the access control entry. So here we go. Every entry, every entry here represents an access control entry, so ACE. And uh, over there, we can see even more of that. So there is an allow, there is a in hex, uh, the value that represents this beats that we were looking at. And then we can uh, also look into other entries. So sometimes we get seed. Please observe that. Sometimes we get seed selected in blue, like you see. Uh, so this one, for example. Sometimes you've got these little letters. BA, by the way, in fact, stands for building admins. Seed stands for some account that we don't really have a letter shortcut for. Now we might be thinking, why sometimes we have a like a letter shortcut for something, or sometimes we don't? Well, I would say, hmm, because that's how SDDL is constructed. Sometimes we do have, in fact, shortcuts, sometimes we don't. Yeah, so for example, for the custom accounts, of course, we won't have a shortcut. But even though we are not really using the custom accounts, for example, we are here using the trusted installer account, this is also not TI for trusted installer or anything really, TR for trusted, but it is in fact not seen in the form of a shortcut. That's why you can see here that that's actually the seed. How do I know it's a trusted installer? Let me explain it in a moment, but in general, we can see, for example, here that there is an FA, FA, but we can also see that there is a GA. Yeah, so these two things. So there's a GA, basically for the trusted installer, and then right next after it, there is a FA. And when we look into that more uh, verbal description here, we can see that there is an anti-service trusted installer twice, and one allow a number, and one allow full control. Hmm. So we can guess that probably full control is going to be something starting with a letter F. Yeah. So that's going to be this FA. And we can also guess that that number, it's going to be probably this one because that's the leftover over there. So we are thinking, okay, but why then in the GUI, in the GUI PowerShell, PowerShell GUI, um, we've got over there that 268-435-456. Why is like that? And this is obviously the moment where we start the calculator and we look at that. Let me just do programmer because it's going to be here a little better. And that's the decimal value that we are looking at. And just have a look. 268-435-456. And when we enlarge it, you can see that in a binary version, this is nothing but 32 bits. 32 bits. Okay, so that's this 32-bit access mask we were talking about. Yep, and have a look. Remember we said that this high-order bits, it's a G-bits, generic access? Yeah, so this one, it's selected. And this actually is called, also we could see it in SEDL, this one is called the GI, which means generic all, which means system-based full control. Now, if we do compare that output to what we saw in the slides, and let me return back to this one, you can see that 2 to the power of 28, in fact, it's a GI. And also, when we look once again into PowerShell, you can see that this value, it's nothing but 2 to the power of 28. So proving that permissions, it is a 32-bit access mask, and we always operate on numbers. Now, sometimes you're going to find it useful when you are auditing larger, larger structures of folders. Or, for example, if you are trying to find something that stands out. Um, one of the cases that we had is that we had a customer where information was leaking. Yeah. And they were wondering what was the path through which information leaked. And uh, how do you check for that? It's like someone calls us like, hey, we, we think we got an information leak. Could you please check what kind of channel that would be? And we could be like, whoa, that's going to be quite a lot of searching. Like what? Email, investigation, on the endpoint, also folders, access to data. Ooh, it's a lot. Yeah. But still, 
not impossible. So when we got like a larger folder structures, you're not going to be browsing like, hey, show me like each of the folders, what is it? But you're going to just say like, on, on that folder structure, run me the calculation, show me the numbers on each of the levels so that I can identify across these numbers, basically where potentially someone has too much access. And that's basically how I, we approach this problem because um, because we had to search through like, I don't know, over 10,000 folders easily. And uh, it's a lot of searching. So obviously we, ha we have to find a way how that auditing is gonna be uh, efficient over there. Anyway, we can see that these bits are very clear. Now, just a little one more thing. Uh, when we are, once we are there, you can see that there's like a minus 161 and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Okay, calculator is definitely our friend. So let's do once again, 161 without minus for now. And you will see why without minus. 127 and then 36. And yet again, please have a look. This bit and that bit, two bits selected. Okay, so what is it? If this is like a last value over there. So we can see it's GX, DR, GX, DR, it's this value, and that's these two bits selected. And once again, GX, DR, okay, let's see. GX, DR, so that's two to the power of 29 plus two to the power of 30. Super easy. Now. Interesting part about that is that we might be thinking, okay, what about the minus then? Where does the minus come from? Minus, it's a parity bit. So when we get an even or odd number of bits, we've got minus or not representing the pairs of bits, so the parity bit. And because there is two, that's why we've got minus. Yeah, so eventually it's actually pretty easy and uh, we can see what that is. So we might be thinking, okay, what about the lowest one? What's to the two to the power of zero, which makes things even or odd? So that's going to be two to the power of zero. Of course, it's one. So then it's going to be making things even or odd. Of course, I'm going to answer this question, but let's dig in a little bit deeper into how first these G permissions are seen in GUI.